Hey everyone, hey teachers, welcome to another episode of my Facebook Live fall series. And my name is Rachel Parlett, and I am from the Classroom Nook at classroomnook.com. And I've been meeting you here each Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to bring you some tips and strategies for you to use in your classroom and hopefully some um, valuable takeaways as well. Before we dive in, I wanna just double check, make sure we're good to go on my Facebook page as I always do on my phone. So let's just take a look, and it looks like we are good to go. So let's go ahead and get started. Tonight, I'm gonna to talk to you about five different games that you can play using 100 Start. And if you think 100 Starts are just for younger kids, hopefully tonight you'll walk away with some valuable um, tricks and games that you can use with your students, even if you teach the older grades, because the hundreds chart, hopefully you'll see tonight, is a super valuable math tool. So welcome again, and let's go ahead and get started. And if you stick with me to the end, I've got a freebie that I'm going to give with you that is going to be, um, it includes all the stuff that I'm talking about today and the games that you can play. So stay with me for that. All right, so before we get started, if you have a teacher friend that you could share this information with, I would really appreciate that. You can do it by clicking the share button that's right below this video and get it out to teachers' friends so that I can reach more teachers with some free and uh, free materials. So if you feel inclined, please do so. So the power of a hundreds chart. And tonight, I must say, it's going to be kind of a shorter Facebook Live because I just want to get right to the point and share with you the information. So hopefully... Um, it'll be quick and you can get right on with your evening. But the power of the 100 chart is where I want to start because hopefully if you haven't been using 100 chart in your classroom, hopefully you will see the value of it after we get done here today. And so just to point out a few things that I see the value of using 100 chart, um, one being it's a great visual representation. So I have this 100 chart here. It's the same one that you see on the screen. But um, it gives students a really nice visual. They can see how the numbers line up, which numbers um, they're going to start to see patterns, which we're going to talk about in a second. But it's just a great visual, represent re visual representation of the base 10 system. So also, it functions like a number line. And a lot of students, especially when they get into skills like rounding, they have a uh, difficult time kind of picturing numbers as they relate to each other. So it's a really great number line for 1 through 100. It highlights place value. Student, students can see, you know, that all of the numbers in this row have zeros in their ones place, the nines, the eights, and so on. So especially if you do teach in the younger grades, and even some of my fourth graders when I taught fourth grade would have a difficult time kind of visualizing um, place value. It's a great um, visual for that and highlights that. It also helps students to see how the numbers relate to each other. So for example, if you, um, pick any number on the 100 chart, let's just say 45, they can see that plus 1 is 46, minus 1 is 44, and then plus 10 and minus 10. So they can see how the numbers around them relate to the number that you're talking about. And finally, it shows patterns in numbers. Students can see that um, as it goes up in there, that the, the ones always line up, the twos always line up, the threes always line up. And there's a ton of different activities that you can do with just patterns alone. But today I want to talk with you about five games that you can play so that you um, can kind of get students to see these patterns and to see the highlights of the place value and whatnot. So, five games, and here they are. The first one is called Race to 100. And the uh, materials that you need, you'll see, you see they're right on the screen. And... Again, everything that I'm showing you right now is in a free download that I'm going to give to you tonight. So um, you'll be able to look at them a little more clearly if you choose to download it. So the first one is called Race to 100. And the cards are just small little game cards that you can put. Um, you can put all the materials for each game in a small little baggie. Uh, make it really easy for you to kind of have in your classroom and pull out whenever you want to. You can make several sets um, so that all of your students can play each game at the same time. And they're very... Um, you don't really need a whole lot of materials for each game. So I suggest putting them in like a small uh, quart size type baggie with all the materials, put a little sticker on it to label it, and you're good to go. So the first game, again, is called Race to 100. Now, this game is for the more basic level, but there definitely is a way that you can um, use it in the upper elementary grades, third and fourth grade, maybe fifth grade, especially if you have struggling struggling um, learners in math. So how you play is you basically just take two dice, and you roll them, and each player has a marking chip. And so let's say you roll a six, you move your 
uh, marking chip to a six, then your partner goes and moves, then you roll it again, and they add whatever they rolled, let's say they rolled um, a five, then they would add five to six. So for the younger grades, it's obviously very good for those adding skills, but for the upper grades, it's great for mental math, because students can um, kind of go quickly. So for the, for the older grades, you can really challenge them to add quickly and get that mental math going really, really fast. So um, it's just a really simple game. So the, and then of course the to win all the the first player to get to 100 or go past it is the winner. So just your basic level game um, that you can use with the younger grades or use it for like a quick fast challenge adding game for your older students. The second game, let me get this out of the way. The second game is five in a row. So this is going to be great for um, when you're introducing multiplication. And what you can do is, or the, look, the card looks like this, five in a row, and you see it on the screen there. You're going to also need digit cards to go with it, which are also provided in the free downloads. So you can see them here. They're just little slips of paper, each with a number on it. Um, it does go up to 12 in case you perhaps want to use it with a 100s and 20s chart. I know some um, teachers, especially in the older grades, like to use it and add that last, that extra bit to the 100s chart. So you can use it for 120 because I go up to 12 with the um with the number, but basically what they do is they, um, you wanna make several sets of these, several sets of the number cards, so there's more than one of each digit, and the students just put it in a pile, and then what they'll do is they will flip up two numbers, so we have an eight and a seven, and then they would have to multiply that, so 56, and then they put their marking chip on 56 on the board, and then their player goes, and then they keep going back and forth flipping over numbers, multiplying them together, and the first person to get five numbers in a row, however you want to do it, diagonally if you want to allow them, across, if you want to, if you want to do, I guess you couldn't really do four corners, it doesn't work like bingo, I guess, but um, you could do, you, once they get five in a row, they're the winners, and then they can shuffle the cards up and play a game, play again, and um, take their marking chips off the board. So you need five marking chips, actually you'll need more than five marking chips, because They'll just want to keep playing and playing until they get five in a row. So that's game number two, five in a row. And all you'll need, oh, actually, I said you you could use marking chips, but on here I, I have them use um, crayons so they could actually color it in. But if you want them to be able to play several um, games in a row, then you can have them use marking chips. That way they can wipe the board clean and then play a second round. Really great, easy center. The third game is called Roundup. This is great for when you're just starting rounding um, in the younger grades, maybe first or second. And we have, it's called the Roundup, little card like that. And all you need again are, is the hundreds chart, the um, digits, and several marking chips for each student. So you want to, if you have two different colors, that would be great, or however many people you have playing per game. And what they do is they flip up two cards again, they're going to multiply the number, and then they're going to round to the nearest tens. So in this case, they're only going to be putting their chips here but they can see how they line up. And it, again, like we talked about before, it works as a great number line. So if they multiply two numbers together, they can see if this um, being the um, the two different place, places for them to round to, they would be able to see which uh, side of the chart their number is closest to. And sorry, I don't really quite fit all the way on the screen here, but they'll be able to see which they're closest to, whether it's 60, or 70 or 50 and so on. So um, the, what, this, what the students do is they round the numbers together, they put their marking chip on the place value, what it rounds up to, and then they can, they can put more than one chip on, let's say they have several numbers that round to 30, they can stack their chips, and then once one through 10, or I'm sorry, 10 through 100 is all um, filled up, then they would see how many chips they have on the board and the person with the most chips wins that round. So that's pretty simple to do. The fourth game is called What's the Picture? Now this is a fun game because you can put this, you can use this in like any holiday because what the students do is they read these clue cards to form like a mystery picture. And I have a rainbow that you see there on the screen, but if let's say we just celebrated Halloween, you could have them somehow form a pumpkin, Thanksgiving is coming up. If you Google mystery 100 picture mystery card, mystery hundreds chart mystery picture on Google, you'll see a ton of different examples that you can 
um, find that you don't have to come up with your own picture. But basically what you do is you, you have to create these, no, these clue cards and you can see the example that I have there. It says the starting number is 77 and then the clue that you're going to give them is color in the number that's less, that is 10 less than 77. So they have to use the 100 star to look. They find 77 because that's their starting number and then it says color in the number that's 10 less. So now they have to know that if they go directly up one, that's going to be 10 less. If they go directly down, 10 more, one, one less, one more, and so on. So then they would color in 67. And then after they've completed all of the clue cards, if they did it correctly, which is a great um, self-assessment right there, if they did it correctly, then it, um, it'll show the picture properly and you can have like an answer key somewhere where they can't see it, maybe put it in a, a envelope where they can't see it, and then once they're done, they can reveal it and make sure they're all good. But hopefully it will be pretty obvious if they didn't um, do it correctly. So that is game number four. Game number five is puzzle matchup, and this is really good for number sense for students. So basically what you'll need to do is have a, um, a blank hundreds chart, or you can even just create on like, um, PowerPoint or something, create a table, and then like you can see on the example on the screen there, you fill in only certain numbers on it and then you cut them out. and Cut it out just like you see there, doesn't have to create any certain shape, but what they would do is they'd have to fill in the numbers that are blank or the boxes that are blank with the correct number. So you can see the example 46, 58, and 69 are filled in on the little puzzle piece and they have to fill in 56, 57, and 68. And they kind of have to know, help visualize on the hundreds chart what numbers are missing. So those are your five games that you can play with in numbers, with a hundreds chart. I keep wanting to say numbers chart, with a hundreds chart. So um, you can get all of these games for free. I have them at my Teachers Pay Teacher store. It includes all five of the game cards, it includes the number cards, and it includes the hundreds chart. Um, you could also substitute in your own hundred star if you want to go to 120. All of these games would work with that as well. So if you just go to bit.ly forward slash forward slash cn dash 100 and 100 and the um, the capitals, it's case sensitive. So make sure you put in those exact um, capital letters cn dash capital h in order to get it, and it'll take you right to the freebie where you can grab it and. Before we leave, I want to invite you on a road trip with me, myself. I am going to, I'm really excited, I'm going to a conference this weekend in Philadelphia. It's the annual conference for middle level education, and I'm going with my friend Mary Beth from Brainwaves Instruction, and I'm leaving on Sunday morning, and I'm flying, or I'm driving, she's flying and meeting there, meeting me there, but um, I would like to invite you to join me on my road trip as we go down to Philadelphia, and then I'm going to be um, on Instagram throughout the weekend sharing things that I'm learning, my biggest takeaways, and maybe we'll pop in for a quick Facebook Live if we can um, to share with you some of the cool things that we're learning for teaching students in the middle level grades. So if you are not doing anything this weekend, please join me starting on Sunday where I will be on Instagram. This is on Instagram on my stories. If you're not always already following me, just go to or search for me with the handle the classroom nook with the at sign in front of it and you will see me there. Follow me, and then I will appear at the top bar of your Instagram where you will be able to check in with me and see how we're doing and the cool things that we're learning. I'm really excited. I haven't been to a teacher conference in a long time, so it's going to be a really great time. So please join me there. And finally, if you don't mind sharing this video, I would love for you to send this off to your teacher's friends so that they can go and grab the freebies as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Please meet me here next Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or catch me on the replay. And something else to tell you about the replay. Unfortunately, I feel as though um, the, the sync of my voice and my mouth moving doesn't quite line up. I think it's okay for live, which if you're watching me live right now, it doesn't make any difference. But if you're catching me on the replay, it's just a little bit off. And I'm not really sure. I got to play around with it a little bit. But um, hopefully that doesn't bother you too much. I just want to acknowledge that and point that out. So again, thank you so much for joining me tonight. And you can always find me on um, my blog, classroomnook.com, where I post every single Wednesday. And um, if you go there, you'll see a quick pop-up. You can grab a couple freebies, get on my emailing list, and I'll pop into your inbox with all sorts of goodies and whatnot. So again, thanks so much for having me within your um 
screen, your phone, wherever you're watching me tonight. Have a great rest of your evening and a good start to your weekend. Take care. See you next week.